Uh, what's been scarier is the markets. Over the last few days, it's, it's like extremes, right? Take a look at what's going on Friday, Monday, uh, yesterday, today, relatively tranquil, but who knows for how long. Uh, billionaire investor, very good strategist in his own right, Ken Fisher, says you might want to get used to this sort of thing. Uh, and, and when it comes to this bull market, to step back and realize, as he put it, it's kind of probably the most joyless bull market in history. I, I like that expression, Ken. Um, explain what you mean. Well, we have a culture that isn't exactly what I would call biblical in that in the aftermath of 2007-9, it's not the way you might think. It's though we walk through the valley, the shadow of death, we do fear evil and we fear it around every corner and kind of contrary to John Templeton's famous line that bull markets are born on pessimism, grow on skepticism, mature on optimism and die of euphoria, we're still in this process as if a gear was stripped where we're just stuck in skepticism and while the market keeps going higher that skepticism makes us joyless the bull market goes on the longer that grinds that way the longer the bull market wants to run this is likely the longest bull market in history but with low average annual returns per year and therefore joyless we don't have that juice running through us that makes us say yippee this is fun you can measure the skepticism in so many ways that you know that it's relatively joyless and, it, and, it, I, and I like that. That's bullish. No, you lie because obviously you don't get everyone involved in the party, right? I mean, there, there, there are a lot of individual individual retail participation is still quite low, remarkably enough. And, and I, I always hear from folks who say to you, maybe I should dive in now. And, you know, I, I see this market in Chicago. But they never do. Or uh, what would be a signal to you that this joyless bull market, whatever you want to call it, has gotten long in the tooth? Because by almost any historical measure, you know, it's pretty long. Uh, you you no, seem no, to be arguing. What, what happens then? Absolutely, Neil. It's very long, and it's going to get longer because of that lack of joy. And if you looked for joy, you can measure that normally in lots of different ways. But one of the ways you might look for that is in uh, lots of buoyant IPOs that do well, which, of course, isn't happening, uh, as I wrote 25 years ago, IPO means it's probably overpriced, <laughs> and a lack of IPO, a, a lack of IPO means it's party time overload. Well, what about and big deals? Party... I mean, the IPO is notwithstanding, and if you see a big deal like Monsanto and Bear or what have you, you, now and then they still, they still come up. I mean, obviously the but, managers but, but all, are still keen on them. But but all of that is just simply taking companies that are taken private or right. deals done, company A buying company B, that's very different than what we would normally see late in a bull market, which is lots of stock issuance for big premiums. Look at all the unicorns that they can't get to go public without decimating the price. The backlog of unicorns is a staggering statement about the lack of joyfulness. So that, that's a healthy market. sign for this market continuing. Does politics enter the fray at all, Ken? In other words, the prospect oh, of sure. a Clinton let's, let's... War or a Trump administration. I had Mark Cuban here last week, uh, Ken, saying he's convinced. Now, he's biased. He likes Hillary Clinton more than, than Donald Trump. The prospect of a Trump win and then an outright Trump win election day, the market tanks because of the uncertainty. What do you think? Let me go a different direction. I've been saying all year that this is the year of falling uncertainty, and that's true whether it's Brexit, the original fear of the Chinese. If you remember at the beginning of the year, people thought there would be four interest rate hikes this year, and so far right. we haven't had a one, and I doubt that we will until after the election. I wrote that in Forbes early in the year. The fact of the matter is that normally it's true, if you look at the history of presidential election returns and inaugural year returns, that and there's only very few exceptions to this. In the year where we elect a Republican, election year returns are above average and inaugural year returns are below average. But in reverse, when we elect a Democrat, election year returns are below average and inaugural year returns are above average. I think mm. that's because why is always tougher to understand than what. But I think that's because we, we think the Republicans pro-market, pro-growth, pro-this, pro-that, and then we find out later that he's just a politician. 
when we elect the Democrat, we're fearful, and then we find out in the inaugural year they're not as bad, because presidents don't really have as much power as people think they do. In this case, I think we get that effect if Hillary Clinton's elected, but I think we also get the reverse of normal if Mr. Trump should win, because people are so afraid of him the way Mr. Cuban described. But it's also people where, you, where you're starting out. I mean, uh, Barack Obama had nowhere to go but up. The markets had melted down so much. You could You're talking about that, one that, instance. I understand. I, yes. I believe me, uh, and I agree with that premise. But and, and, and what's happening now is the markets have run up far and fast over this time. So you could argue but, that Mahout, no matter who gets in, it's a, a tough thing to sustain. No, no, no. I'm going to go back to the okay. point that that joy, joyless bull market, that grinding, begrudging bull market is one that hasn't yet gotten to John Templeton's even optimism, much less euphoria, and therefore has longer to run. How much longer, and Ken? That, How much longer than that? I don't really know, but I'm going to say probably years. Wow. Years. Yeah. Because fundamentally, you've got to have a good period of time of optimism before you get to that euphoria. And unless the, the way markets work, if a big bad thing comes along that none of us foresee, that can knock the Templeton concept asunder. But if that doesn't happen, you've got to get to that euphoria, at least in a number of conventional ways. And we haven't begun to see that. The only thing I see that's really negative creeping on the horizon is the yield curve globally keeps getting flatter and flatter. And a real flat yield curve turning to an inverted global yield curve, which is tough to do with short rates so low. But that real flat yield curve eventually will choke off bank propensity to lend. And that would be bad. But otherwise, this bull market just seems want to, to want to grind on. Yeah. Ken, thank yep. you very much. You're great. I always appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Getting the insight. Great Ken to see Fisher. you back.